We're in this series of messages on the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5. And uh, this is the one that I've dreaded all summer. Okay, just want to get it out there uh, because you know me. And you're going to go, what's he preaching about this for? Because it's in the Bible, that's why. <laughs> I'm, I just want you to know I'm not making this up. So, Galatians chapter 5. Oh, wait. That, that should be in Galatians, not 1 Peter. <clears throat> you know, ever since I, uh, my, my preaching Bible fell apart, <laughs> it used to be it would automatically open to the passages it needed to open to. <laughs> and uh, it made it so much easier. It was kind of automatic over the years. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> 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 See, the people who've been here a long time know they don't listen to what I'm saying. They, the visitors, though, they take that seriously. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Okay, Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. And then in chapter 6, if someone's caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently. But watch yourself, so that, or you also may be tempted. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Even when it doesn't seem easy for us, and even though it uh, is sometimes difficult to live out, we thank you for your spirit that helps us live out your word and your promises. So we claim that today in Jesus' name. Amen. The word that we're dealing with today in this fruit of the spirit is gentleness and, and it's often translated meekness. So in your Bible, it might say meekness. Now, I gotta tell you, um, when you think of me, you probably don't think meekness and gentleness, you know, but uh, you're accurate in your perception. <laughs> so th there's something about this that uh, I've struggled with most of my Christian life, which has been a long one. Um, and that is that of all the fruit of the Spirit, this one, this gentleness, this meekness, is probably the most countercultural of any of them. I don't believe that it's a natural instinct or something we've learned sociologically how to be gentle and meek. It has to be the Lord. It has to be the Holy Spirit working in us and through us, or we won't experience this. And uh, in, in our culture, I, there, you know, there's, I, I grew up a long time ago, so there were books like Looking Out for Number One, <laughs> you know, so how to swim with the sharks without being eaten. And, and I, I love those books. You know, every business book that came along, I'd grab and read because it was all about how to not be meek or gentle in the workplace. And of course, if you're doing that in the workplace, then you can also apply it at home, see, <laughs> or at church. Um, and I found there's really no difference uh, in uh, the secular world and the spiritual world. This is still countercultural. It goes against our instinct. It goes against uh, the way we naturally respond to things. And uh, in some places, honestly, it's seen as a character flaw or as a weakness, something that you really need to overcome. Uh, if you're demonstrating true meekness and gentleness in si certain situations, they'll say, you really need to take a uh, uh, self-esteem class. <laughs> maybe there's a workshop that you can sign up for. Uh, maybe assertiveness training, you know, and, and get over this problem of meekness. It's perceived as a problem. And, um, and yet it may be one of the most powerful and significant fruit that the Holy Spirit infuses in our life. 
even though it's a little bit difficult for people to handle it. Now, the reason that this is so difficult is that it has to do with how we respond in situations, how we react to people or things or circumstances, and, uh, and how we treat the people around us. So it's very sensitive. It's, uh, it's not something to be taken lightly, and I'm gonna need your help with something here. Um, would you two help me? In fact, let's get the whole family. Can we get the whole family up? Would that be all right? Come on, it's your anniversary coming up. All, all four of you, come on up here. I, I'm gonna need your help, okay? Okay, just stand right here. This, no, not on the platform. You get right there. I get the platform. <laughs> okay, I surrender. See, I'll, I'll practice meekness here. Okay, get up on the platform. Okay, so here, I need you to do four different uh, roles here, okay? Okay, so uh, when we find ourselves in difficult situations, there's certain responses that we do. And usually, if you know yourself or you know the person sitting next to you, they, they do certain things all the time, usually. I'm not going to pick anybody out, and I'm not making eye contact. Okay, so <laughs> one of them is to fight, right? You're the fight. So give me a fighting pose. Let's see how. Well, you obviously. <laughs> and he's making eye contact too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fight. Okay. Now uh, the other one might be um, flight. That you run away, right? Okay, so take your hands off her and give me a, a good runaway look. No, no, don't run away. Don't run away. <laughs> I don't want him hitting me. I don't want her running away. Okay. Like, do a pose like you're running away. No, that's not running away. Running away would be like running. No, that's hiding. Can you do it under Somebody show her what a running away would look like. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Okay, you got that, you got fighting, we got him, we got run. No, keep going. Oh. <laughs> this is an aerobic sermon. Okay. You want one? Okay. Shall we get one for you? How about freeze? Just freeze. Oh, oh you keep running. <laughs> you keep fighting, fighting. And you, and you freeze, right? Is that a freeze? Is that a freeze? Okay. And then there's one that we often don't notice, but it's one that happens, and, and little kids are really good at it, and then sometimes they take it on into life. So when there's a catastrophe or a painful situation or a difficult thing, they flop. <laughs> Is that a flop? Is that okay? So we fight, we flee, we freeze, and we flop. Just flop. Okay, give them a hand. They're good. That's it. We got it. Now, all of those are instinctive sort of uh, responses that we bring to situations. And sometimes they well and they surprise us. We're surprised by our reaction. Um, some, you know, if you're a flopper, you know who you are. I'm not, I'm not judging you. But if you just, you know, you get into a situation and you just give up. I quit. That's it. Wow. Or if I, I, I'm not going to have you guess which one I do. <laughs> but um, what I want to tell you today is that there's an alternative to that. And that's where this meekness and gentleness comes in. It is something that goes counter to any of those four responses that we normally bring in. And I, and I want us to look at how that happens. It's all about power. It's all about power struggles and how we handle power in our lives. Any of you think you have too much power? Oh, you think they have too much power. Yeah. Okay, so that's not fair. Okay. Okay, it, hardly anyone ever feels the power that they have in their own lives. Isn't that interesting? Anybody feel like some people around them, either in this room or at work or somewhere else, have more power than you? Anybody feel that way? You're saying no, but then you're kind of your eyes are shifting towards Sheila. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll talk to you after. Yeah, we'll talk to you. So, now, and in power issues, you, you know, I mean, we we spend a lot of our life dealing with power issues. I mean, that's just the way our our uh, culture has set itself up. And we can get really good at power games. And uh, one side of it is that it, you, we get, some people get really aggressive, right? They're in your face. Uh, they use their voice, they use their body language. They, 
they invade your personal space. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then the other one is the, the passive, just going along, not, not putting themselves out there. No, what do you want to do? I don't, I don't care, you know. But the funny thing is, the, the passive one, the passive person is always in control. They're always the ones with the power. So they, they feel like they're just, you know, I, whatever you want. And then what they do is whenever you do, they go, well, that was the wrong thing. <laughs> and then they trick you, you know. So, uh, so the power always will flow to the passive person. And that's why a divorce is so painful because in a marriage they're struggling, they're fighting, they're working, they're pulling on the on the cord back and forth, and and everything. And then one of them goes, "Okay, I'm out of here," and walks away. They become really passive. Where does all the power go? To the one who walked out. And the person who's left is going, "Wait, come back and fight, come back and struggle, come back." No, I'm out of here. And all the power goes right out with them. Now. I think what God's telling us in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, the, the evidence of the Spirit working in our lives is meekness, is gentleness, is that there's an alternative to the aggressive and the uh, passive power game. And that is assertive meekness. Assertive meekness. It's not weak. It's not freezing, it's not running, it's not surrender, it's not sucking the power out of the room by taking it with you. It's staying in there, it's staying engaged, but not in an aggressive or passive way. It's choosing, actually, and this is really significant, it's choosing to not play the power game. Say, I'm aware of it, I could do it, maybe I'm good at one of these or the other. But I'm choosing not to do it as the, as the Holy Spirit lives through me. And that is rare, and that is profound, and that is very powerful. But it takes us surrendering our natural instinct and inclination for stuff. So um, I'll tell you that, it, do, it doesn't happen to me often because, you know, I am, okay, so... I was the guy who was kicked out of school for fighting all the time. So, okay, so I might have gone a little on the, um, like Barron's position here, and uh, more on the aggressive side. And, uh, and then I became really adept as a pastor at being a passive controller. I could get anybody to kind of come along and kind of lure them in, you know, and pretty soon they think they're in charge and they're, and they're not. They're just doing what I want them to do. I got really good at that. But they're all power games and that's not how the spirit works. So when we first started this church and we came here to this building, remember there was a Wesleyan church and they uh, closed and then we got the call from the pizza restaurant, you know, saying, you want to give up the pizza place and come here to the church? And we said, well, okay, let's try it two years ago. When we came here, we knew nothing. We didn't know the neighborhood. We didn't know anybody. And uh, one day Mark and I were out uh, trimming some pine trees here in the back that had kind of grown over and had become kind of a drug dealing center. And, uh, and we decided, let's raise these up, clean them up a little bit, and then uh, that'll, that'll look nice. So we're there working away, chainsaws, you know, and, and one, of our, one of our neighbors comes charging over, we didn't know who it was, never met him, anything like that, and just started going at us, right? I mean, you know, F-bombs flying and everything, and, then you're, you're taking it. and I'm thinking, he's doing all that to us, and we're holding chainsaws. <laughs> This guy must be an idiot. You know? <laughs> All I have to do is just look the other way. <laughs> but uh, and, and that's really weird. And, and he's going, I, I know what's going on in this place. And I, I know Carl Westfall. He runs this property. Uh, that's my brother, you know. And, uh, and uh, I'm calling him. I have his direct phone number. And I'm calling him. And I'm going to get you people thrown out of here. Da, 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 da. And all I could think to say was... Uh, Tell him hi from John. <laughs> and then it went away, and we looked at each other and went, that was weird. <laughs> we, we, we looked, that was weird. And then we went on cutting the tree down. <laughs> and uh, uh, about two weeks later, a band was here practicing early in the morning, and the uh, same guy came and was pounding on the doors outside, demanding that, uh, I thought, wow, people are wanting to get into church. <laughs> this is great. You know, then it was, uh, their demand that I come out and meet them outside. 
And I uh, thought, well, here we go. And uh, welcome to the neighborhood. And so um, I go out and it gets right up in my grill, you know, and uh, is just threatening me and yelling at me and more F-bombs blowing up all around me, you know. And, um, and he's saying, I'm gonna follow you home and F up your family and I'm gonna blah, blah, blah. And, and all I can think is, why don't I just headbang him on the bridge of the nose and end this? <laughs> and then I can get in and prepare my sermon on love. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And, uh, and then it dawned on me, wait, if you do that, then he'll probably call the cops and then you'll be arrested for assault. <laughs> Well, that's not going to work. I thought, but I'm genetically incapable of backing up. <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's a sign of weakness. So I'm there, and he's just going at me. He's attacking everything. And th this is where I think the Holy Spirit works. I had this fit of inspiration. All my natural instincts, uh, if I shove him, I'm going to jail. If I grab his arm, I'm going to jail. If I touch him anyway, I'm going to jail. If I back up, I'm too weak. And I'm feeling... Lord, what do I do? And suddenly it came to me. I went, you know, we're really excited to start a prison ministry, and I think we'll begin by visiting you in jail. <laughs> and he just stopped and turned and went home. <laughs> and then the weird saw that I come in, I'm all jittery, you know, oh, boy, dodged the bullet there, literally. And, uh, uh, and then about a half hour later, he and his wife walked into worship. <laughs> and I thought, that is the weirdest thing. That is this. You know what? We're going to win the neighborhood one fist fight at a time. You know? <laughs> but I thought about that later and I thought, any response that I naturally would have done, any, even if I would have won the fight, even if I would have put him down, would have lost. And I had no natural inclination of how to handle this. I literally was genetically incapable of handling this. And I believe that the Holy Spirit puts the words in our mouth sometimes that diffuses, that is neither aggressive or passive, but it's assertively meek. Now, to be honest, you know, it doesn't happen every day. <laughs> I sometimes do go my own inclinations, usually to, to not the betterment of anyone. But... Um, but that was a time where I felt like God intervened. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in our life. It helps us be better than we are. Helps us to be more than we are. Helps us to, to diffuse situations instead of pouring kerosene on the barbecue. You ever tried that? It's quick. So, <laughs> what is this gentleness? Um, why is it so important? I think it's important because um, from our own experiences and the way we were raised, all those kind of things, we can walk through our day and be bombarded with perceived insults, perceived threats, perceived put-downs, Sometimes they're blatant and other people see them. Sometimes we just feel them. You know, we just get a cringe in our stomach and we go, whoa, what did they mean by that? You know, the problem is we do what they meant by that. And so when we have these daily uh, attacks on our character, in our, in our minds anyway, we start to build up walls big walls, strong walls of defense, of posturing, of posing, of ways to relate to people so that they can't hurt us and we can show that we're, we're not that, whatever that is. And the only way these walls can start coming down brick by brick by brick is when we allow the Holy Spirit to bring the fruit of meekness, assertive meekness, gentleness, into these relationships. Uh, and so I've been practicing this week because it's not easy for me, okay? Um, <laughs> you know, um, I see insults where they don't exist. I see perceived attacks uh, from people I've never met. You know, they're, 
I, I could be going down the road and think, well, look what they said, you know, in their car. They're, they're you know, like, like I'm the center of their cars. They're going down five. And uh, I probably am, but, you know, you can't prove that. And, uh, and the, the, I think I need to practice um, letting things roll off. You know, some of you are better at that than I am. I thought that by taking these things and not responding to them, I was dealing with it in a good Christian way, right? Have you ever had that happen where you kind of take, you accumulate insults or you accumulate put downs, you accumulate stuff, and you're not dealing with it, you're saying, you know, that's their problem, I'm not going to deal with it, but you keep it. You store it up, and they don't go away. See, I used to think, well, I'm not responding to those things, so that doesn't get to me, but I'm keeping it. I'm, I'm harboring those things inside me, right? And guess what happens when it gets full? You know, there's an old song we used to sing at camp, it only takes a spark to get the fire going. <laughs> I don't know if that's what this was about, but, but I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I have the ability to blow up. Sometimes over things you go, wow, why am I blowing up over that? I may not be, I may actually be blowing up over mm -hmm. all these little things that I didn't let go of. I didn't surrender them to the Lord, I actually just kept them. And I kept them and kept them until I'm not keeping that anymore. <clears throat> right? And then we're cleaning up like a bad bombing, you know, I was trying to fix all the relationships that damage and blow it off. So the fruit of meekness, of the true meekness, lived out is that we have the courage to not store those up, to not tuck those away, to actually let them roll off. <clears throat> now, the reason I'm calling that assertive meekness is that we're not ignoring them. We're not pretending they didn't happen. We're not uh, justifying other people's weirdness or meanness, we're not doing any of that. We, we, we recognize all of it. And as an act of spiritual discipline, we're choosing to let it go. We're choosing that. That is a hard, assertive choice. That's not something that you just go into. You know, there's a, a couple of different passages I'll share with you. Remember I had 1 Peter here at the very beginning? First Peter chapter 3, verse um, 14. Let's start with 14. Even if you should suffer for what's right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, set, up, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But, but, do this with gentleness. That's that word. Do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It's better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Hear that? That's very, very significant. Because we're prepared to give an answer, right? We're prepared when, when things come at us. We're prepared to defend ourselves. 
But to do it with gentleness and respect is a whole different thing. And I believe that requires the Holy Spirit indwelling and then helping us live that out. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not something that we're going to go to a uh, uh, assertiveness, meekness training seminar and learn the, the six steps to uh, meekness. You know, first of all, nobody signed up for that, but um, <laughs> it's not going to help you. Uh, but it may be one of the most powerful and profound things uh, that we do. I remember, uh, did you see that movie Gandhi years ago? Played by that, that, that bald guy, you know? Oh, that was Gandhi, yeah. And uh, I remember he was being criticized for his nonviolence. They said, We're, uh, you're, just being, you're just being weak. You're t trying to get us to be weak. You're getting us to, to just uh, give in. And he said, no, 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 no. We are in a war. We are in a battle. We will not be weak. We will use the weapon of nonviolence to win the war. And it changed, it wasn't weakness, it was assertive meekness. I'd never thought of that as a weapon before. But in a spiritual, in a spiritual battle, the worst thing we can do is use our instincts. Trust me, I've got a lot of years of using my instincts uh, to no good. But to open the space so that the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit begins to be demonstrated, I'll tell you what, people won't know how to respond to you. They won't know because they're not used to it. They've never seen this before. They've never had somebody respond in assertive meekness. It's going to be a challenge for me. It's going to be uh, maybe one of the hardest things I do because this means that if I, if I allow the Holy Spirit to do this in my life, and if you allow the Holy Spirit to do this in your life, this will actually change you. Get that? It will change you. It'll change how you respond in circumstances. It'll, it'll change how you react and and it will change how people start to relate to you. I say, why not be radical? Let's take God at his word. Let's say, Lord, bring your Holy Spirit. Release us as your meek warriors and see what happens. Well, this is worth for today. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> come into our hearts and lives and minds. Come into our relationships, our work, our concerns, our fears. Come into every part of our life, Lord. Release your Holy Spirit and change us. Help us to live beyond ourselves. Help us live beyond our past. Help us live beyond our patterns. Make us the men and women that you call us to be. Make us in your image and give us the courage to accept you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.